What's up, everybody? I just wanted to quickly go over the topic 5.6 quiz that you guys all had. The large majority of you did really, really good outside of a couple small mistakes. So I really want to do is just kind of go over the quiz, talk about exactly what I expect on every single part. That way you guys can have a perfect grade next time. So here was the synopsis. Two brands of popcorn, buttery poppets or pop slot, both claim the proportion of its kernels that will pop is 85%. Harry is going to randomly select 200 kernels from each brand and cook them to see what proportion in the sample will pop. The first question says, describe the sampling distribution for the difference in sample proportions. So here's the idea, right? We're given that the proportion from syrup pop slot is 85%, and we're given that the proportion from buttery pops is 85%. Now, first, please don't generically use one and twos for the subscripts. Use something that means something for the problem, like S for Sir Pop Slot, B for Buttery Pops. When kids use generic A and B or generic 1 and 2, it, it gets lost in terms of what these values represent. So please do that. Also, notice I didn't put any hats on these because these are the true proportions from the population that we were given. Now, what Harry is going to do is he's going to look at a sample from Sir Pop Slot. He's going to look at another sample from Buttery Pops, and he's going to look at the difference between that sample proportions. Now, a sampling distribution talks about all possibilities for the difference between a sample from Sir Pop Slot and a sample from Buttery Pops. So they want us to describe the sampling distribution that's going to show all possible differences. So three sentences is all you really need. The center is the mean of all possible differences between a sample from Sir Pop Slot and a sample from Buttery Pops. And if they're both 85%, that's a difference zero. The spread is the standard deviation of all possible differences. And pretty easy formula, a little bit complicated, but not too bad. And because they're both exactly the same, same sample size and same proportion makes it really easy. But I get 0.0357. And the shape is, of course, going to be normal. Now, what a lot of you are doing is you're just writing this, or you're just writing this. Please, I want a sentence, and it's really easy to make a sentence. All you got to do is, in front of it, say, the center is, then give me the mean. The spread is, then give me the standard deviation, and of course, the shape is. So, really simple, just try to make it sentences, because it asks you to describe, and describe implies that you should have some type of sentences there. Now, you do not have to do this, but I thought it was important to actually show you guys in the video what the sampling distribution looks like. So first, notice that the mean, right smack down in the middle, is zero. The standard deviation was 0.0357, so if we go up one, and we go up two, and we go up three, I actually did the math, and then down one, down two, down three, and of course the shape is normal. So this actually shows us all possible differences. Now, anything over here on the positive side is, again, since we looked at the difference between Sir Pops a lot, minus buttery pops, anything on the positive side would mean that the sample proportion from Sir Pop Slot was bigger than the sample proportion from buttery pops. Anything over here on the negative side, less than zero, would mean that the buttery pop proportion sample was the bigger between the two. But we expect them to be the same, which means we see a zero in the middle, but we all know that samples vary. All right, the next question says to check all necessary conditions for that sampling distribution. A lot of you are cutting corners here, you're being lazy, you're not writing full sentences, so here we go. Both samples from Sir Pop Slot and Buttery Pop are random to avoid bias. Both samples have to be random. Please don't just write the word random, put it in a sentence. All right, the sample size of 200 kernels from Sir Pop Slot is assumed to be less than 10% of all kernels from Sir Pop Slot. And the sample size of 200 kernels from Buttery Pops is assumed to be less than 10% of all kernels from Buttery Pops, so that there's independence between the samples. Now, I have no idea how many total kernels either of these companies has, but I'm assuming there's probably millions of popcorn kernels, so 200 is definitely under 10%. But notice how I wrote a sentence in context. The sentence represents kernels, the two different companies. Some of you guys are just saying uh, the sample from population one is under 10%, sample from population two is under 10%. There's no context there, so notice how to write it really nice. And the third condition is that both samples are expected to have 170 popped kernels and 30 that don't. That was 85% of 200 and 15% of 200. But again, a lot of you guys are just writing, uh, there's going to be 170 successes, 30 failures. That's no context there, right? 170 successes are kernels that pop. 30 failures are 30 that do not pop. That's what I want you to write. And 
The same is true for buttery pops because each sample was 200 and both samples are expected to have 85%. So again, you have to write this into nice full sentences if you want anything close to full credit in the future. All right, then we actually looked at a sample that he got. He actually got a sample of 200 from Sir Pop Slot, 94% popped. He got a sample from Buttery Pop, 83% popped. Okay, what is the difference between these two sample proportions? Well, the sample from Sir Pop Slot minus the sample proportion from Buttery Pops was 0.94 minus 0.83, which is 0.11. That's all I wanted. I had a large number of you that, oh, I'm going to find the mean. There's no mean. What are you talking about? This is just one possible difference between two possible samples. The sampling distribution is filled with every possible difference. 11% is just one of them. 11% is just one. So there's no mean in front of this. This is just a possible difference between the two sample proportions that he got. Next up, a lot of you were then going ahead and calculating a standard deviation. You were like, oh, the standard deviation for the difference is giant square root 0.94 times 0.06 divided by 200 plus 0.83 times 0.17 divided by... No, 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 absolutely not, right? This is an actual sample proportion. The 83% is another actual sample proportion. They don't deviate. This is just one possible difference. The difference between these two actual samples was 11%. It doesn't deviate. It is what it is. Now, if we're referencing the sampling distribution, talking about all possible differences, yes, that's where we need the standard deviation that we found here. But you don't use sample proportions to help you find standard deviation. The standard deviation is based on the true values for the sampling distribution. It's not based on something that you got from two samples. Finally, it asks us, oh, so there it is, by the way, there's just my nice, nice work of it. And then finally it said, what's the probability of that difference occurring or more extreme? So we saw a difference of 11%. Now, this is where we can actually go back to this nice picture. 11% is somewhere over here, an 11% difference. Remember, that was 0.94. Sir Pop Slot was bigger. Buttery Pops was 0.83. That was an 11% bigger. Sir Pop Slot was 11% bigger. 11% is somewhere over here. Very, very high. So then what we have to do is find the z-score, take that 11%, subtract the mean of zero, divide by the standard deviation, and we get a z-score of 3.081. So again, we're asked to find the probability that any other difference is more extreme than the one we got. That's a z-score more than 3.081. That's just the z-score equivalent to 11%. And again, go back to the picture. You can actually see that that's about three point something, a little bit more than three standard deviations. So it should all make sense. And of course, I just used normal CDF on my calculator to get this final answer of about 0.1%. Very, very unlikely. So final question. So you know, is this observed difference between the sample proportions unlikely? If so, what does it possibly tell Harry about the two companies? Well, again, this difference happened. Like he actually got 94% for Sir Pop Slot, 83% for Buttery Pop, and he got this 11% difference, which we all found out was very, very unlikely. So yes, this should not happen. So what does this mean? Well, since this is a very unlikely difference, 11% difference should not have occurred based on the sampling distribution, this tells me that the proportion of kernels at Sir Pop Slot that pop is higher than the proportion that pop at Buttery Pops. Like, I should not have seen an 11% difference between the two sample proportions, but I did. And it's a very unlikely outcome, so it tells me that the numbers I was given are wrong. They're not both 85%. Sir Pop Slot is probably higher than 85%. Buttery Pops is lower, and the difference should be bigger. That's when it makes sense. Now, there is, of course, this other option, or the samples were not random, but it did say that Harry took random samples. Now, the only other explanation for something really, really weird happening is if it was not random samples, but I'm not going to go that way because it did say the problem that they were random. So, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully there's a quick review of the quiz. Please utilize this video to make sure that when you do these problems in the future, you are perfect. Written sentences, context, Write symbols, 
do it all perfect. All right, see you later.